beautiful. Look at these. Tomatoes. Absolutely love tomatoes. So I'm going to go and pick everything I can get my hands on, and then we'll have a little cook-up. So what I'm going to make is like a clear, refreshing summer tomato consomme. And I, this, it, I hate to say the word consomme because it reminds me of when my, I was trained and I had to make consomme God knows how many times. Uh, and it's quite, it's quite a pretty sort of posh restaurant affair. And normally, like, I'm not really into that, I'm into sort of home cooking. But this, as a starter, in the summer when it's hot, is just like a slap round the face gets your taste buds going, ready for a lovely proper meal afterwards, but it's so quick to do that I don't mind it. What I want to do is get these tomatoes, about two kilos, into the food processor. I'm not going to put quite all of them in there because I've done it before and it sort of feels quite high to the top. And then I want some vodka. Now the inspiration for this version is kind of like a Bloody Mary, a play on a Bloody Mary, which is obviously your tomatoes, your vodka, horseradish, a couple of shots. Right, and then horseradish. Horseradish tomatoes work really well together. They're really good friends. So I want a nice five centimetre bit, just sort of peeled. Or you can get little jars of the kind of pre-grated hot stuff, but not the stuff in cream, just the grated horseradish. And you can kind of get the skin off and just chop it up roughly if you want. There you go, there's your horseradish. In with the tomatoes, the vodka. I want a good pinch of salt, a good pinch of pepper. I want a swig of vinegar. You think I've gone bonkers. Right, about a tablespoon. Then basil. A little handful of basil, like that. And stalks can go in there. Garlic, two cloves, right, to give it a nice sort of garlicky hum. And once you peel that, put them in, whole into here, lid on top, give it a waz until it's completely sort of whizzed up into a slush. <laughs> Smell that, really good. A bit more vodka. Just a bit more. While I'm doing that, get yourself a bowl and some muslin. Now, you can get muslin uh, in good kitchen shops, you know, sort of those household shops do it. Um, and also, if you go to your butchers, they use muslin to wrap the big joints of meat in. And, you know, especially if you're a young lady, you can chat up the butcher, ask them for a free bit of muslin, like my nan used to in the war. My nan used to get extra portions of meat from Louis Rutter, the local butcher. We all reckon she was having an affair, but she denies it. Anyway, put your hand in. Right, like that. And we've got this completely wazzed up pulp of tomatoes. And at the moment, it looks horrible. It looks absolutely disgusting. But bear with me. Pour it in. Now, the four layers of muslin very, very delicately filter the tomatoes. So what comes out the other end is the most incredible see-through Ugh, amazing juice. And what's brilliant is we just tie this up like one of those old-fashioned seaside hats. Let me get a hook. And I put the hook through here, and already... And you can see it's completely clear there. When you taste what is going on in there, cold, on a hot summer's day, Incredible. Now, you can see this colour here is a little bit bland. So what I want to do is just get a nice little slice of beetroot. So I'm just going to plop this in here. And I'm going to hang this in the fridge. And you can actually almost see the colour coming out of that beetroot already. That will just give it a lovely sort of rosé wine colour. So I'm just going to whack this in the fridge. Sort of six, seven hours, you can get a pretty good product. So you do it in the morning for dinner at night, or do it at night, overnight, for dinner the next day. But it's funny, as you walk down here, Bri, 
you kind of go for this green, 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 and then you get these little hints of colour. Yeah. Actually, quite fun picking them because you're going to have to really struggle, lift them up, and you're never quite sure what you're going to find underneath. Yeah. That's one of my favourites. That's Matt's wild cherry. Oh yeah. wow! They just, just absolutely explode. You know, but that's really gives it a kick. It's a yeah. real tomato kick. That. Yeah. And they're mm. tiny, aren't they? Mm. Absolutely beautiful yeah. little things. Mm. Perfect. That's another of my favourites, black crim. It's. Uh, I think I had a couple of big ones of those this yeah. morning. Yeah. It's really dark, really luscious fruit. Great inside, texture. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. They're just gorgeous when you slice them like that. Do yeah. things eat these much? Um, they're not too bad. I mean, it's fairly controlled in here. Um, I planted a lot of basil and marigolds, but uh, so what does that do? Well, the, the basil helps with repel white fly, um, which is one of the main problems on on tomatoes. Um, same with the mari uh, with the marigolds. They act as insect repellents. Um, they just don't like hanging about it too much. Yeah, yeah. It's the aroma that they give off. But if you've got a lot of green ones left over, um, or they fall off. Um, put them on a windowsill, stick a banana next to them, and as the banana ripens, it gives off ethylene gas and speeds up the ripening process. It's a natural so that's why so. bananas make um, your um, avocados ripen quickly? Yeah, that's right. You should yeah. never store so them. So ethylene? Ethylene gas, yeah. Wow. This is nice and chilled. This is about six hours. Still dripping away, so you could have probably another three hours out of it. But um, put that there for the moment. I want to show you this, right? And you've got to forgive me for how pretty it looks because it's not really my normal style. But this is an incredible dish. It is the easiest thing to do. A brilliant way to use tomatoes and big them up. And it's kind of the pure, it's the pure essence of tomatoes. It smells like it, it tastes like it. Absolutely beautiful. So, ice cube in there to keep it cold. A few little bits of basil. Nice little delicate ones is what you want. You know, a couple of little basil flowers if you like. And then celery, you know, on the sort of Bloody Mary theme. Some nice yellow celery leaves just flicked in there. And then a drizzle of nice extra virgin olive oil. And that is top stuff, absolutely top stuff. And you just sort of give it a nice little slurp. It's so good, it's so good, it's so good. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and take Brian a little glass of this. See if he can tell what it is. Right, mate, I've just made this. Try it. Oh, Drink it from the spoon. It's like a little cold soup and slurp away, big boy. You're experimenting on me again, aren't you? It's <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous. What'd you get? Have a slurp. You get the flavours. Mm. It's so refreshing, isn't it? Okay, there's a bit of horseradish in there. Yay! Vodka, yeah. tiny bit of vodka. Yep. Yeah. Ah, now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not driving home tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>